Hi. Today we'll be talking about if then else and the for loop in Python. Let's go. The if then else mechanism is used to redirect the flow of your program based on a true condition. Here is an example. Here is another example. Notice the column and the tab spacing. These two items are necessary for the completion of an if statement. These two statements, however, will not execute the print function because the initial evaluation is false. Here is where the else statement comes in. By implementing the else statement, another set of instructions can be executed if the initial evaluation is false. If you wish to leave it blank, you can technically just move on to the next set of instructions like this. Or you can use the keyword pass. That's it for the if statement. Next, the for loop. Computers are really good at doing repetitive stuff perfectly. Which is why in the long run, everyone with an IQ lower than stupid will be doomed, and eugenics will occur whether we like it or not, regardless of our political standpoint. This of course means that people like me will be doomed and this video would not have been made because you're supposed to know this the minute you're born. That is, if computers still need us to program them. But until that happens, this is the for loop. This is how I use the for loop in Python. Now, there was a time where I was numbed by the similarities of the various programming languages I've encountered over the years, even to the point of confusion, or should I say frustration, by the sameness of their design and lack of innovation and uh, beauty. Now, that all changed when I encountered Python. I thought I was just seeing another clone that tries to be different. I was wrong. Python is so beautiful because it appeals to common sense now, it doesn't try to worship verbosness it doesn't try to worship oop instead it goes toward what most programming languages fall short of because most programming languages are so full of themselves and their paradigm they have forgotten that they were created to service us and our usage of common sense now maybe one day python will get too big and complicated that it too will go down the path of, you know, paradigm worship and become full of itself. But we are currently living in the golden age of Python where it is not so big that it has become a monster and not so small that it is useless for the modern world. How long would that last? Nobody knows. But I'm bathing in its blissfulness as a programming language at the moment. <laughs> Every language has its time. Even Symbian C++, which is, in my personal opinion, the worst subset of C++ ever had its heydays. See you next week.